Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Mitchell, and I want to go over decision trees with you. Uh, probably decision trees, you may have done this before, uh, and maybe just writing it on a piece of paper. That's how I first learned to do decision trees. But we're going to work through this because Lucidchart does a nice job of creating a visual. Uh, first of all, let's look at what the payoff uh, table had. Uh, and I've just recopied it here in Excel so you can see it. Um, just so you know, the cost of bid on either project is non-refundable. So if we if we actually bid on, on the, wanting this project, we're not going to be able to get that refunded if they decide not to take our bid and go with someone else. The probability, as you can see, it says event A is 30%. That's 0.30, 30%. That means 30% is possible, 70% is that they won't choose our bid. And bet event B, it's 90% and 10% possibility that they won't choose our bid. Then the cost associated with the event is 100,000 for event A and only 25,000 for event B. And successful hosting has to do with two things. We see that if we have a fine, if we have an excellent hosting experience and our weather is good, we have great competitions, we'll make 500,000. Uh, but if the weather's bad or we have mediocre competition or both, our financial benefit drops to 400,000. Event A is 150 and 100,000 when we're looking at that. So what we're doing here when we look at our drawing this out is that we have two different chance nodes. There's a chance nodes here to go if we go with decision A, and here's a chance if we're going with decision B. And as you can see, we have an outcome here if we don't do the the uh, we don't get awarded the bid, we're out that 50,000 in this uh, decision A. Uh, the host sporting event is our decision. So we either can make decision A, decision B, but not both because they overlap in the time period to actually host this event. Now, uh, what most of the time you're gonna see in Lucidchart is if you actually hook these up in Google Sheets, you can do your formula so that the chance node actually will have the expected return. And then you can use the show optimal pass so that it will be highlighted. But I kind of like to make a table at the end and just show the information. So for example, here's my payoff amounts for event A. Uh, you can see we have 500,000 if we have a very successful one. Um, mediocre is 400,000 and there's a probability going there with the 60 and 40. So we have an expected pro uh, event profitability of 460. Then there's a cost of hosting that has to be taken off. And then there is a 30% probability, what, what we see here, of being awarded this. So now we're down to $108,000. Then we have to subtract the cost of bidding. So the net worth of Project A is $58,000. Now if I go on to Event B, where if we uh, there's a 10% chance we don't get awarded, we'll be out to $15,000. But there's a 9% chance. So we see we have a cost of hosting here. We either have a successful host or not, and the outcomes that are related to it. And again, we're taking the 150 times the 90%, the 100,000 times the 10% to have an expected outcome. There's a cost of hosting of 25,000, and we have a probability of 90% that we would uh, this would happen. So uh, subtracting the cost of bidding, what we find out is that the net worth for project B is much higher. So obviously the project that we should ex we should bid on is uh, the decision B. So hopefully this will help you kind of see how to do a decision tree um, and we'll kind of go from there.